What up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on with our CR10S upgrades with the Easy ABL sensor from TH3D. So, let's get into it. So this video is basically part two of my upgrade series for the CR10S. And uh, if you'd like to see part one, then I'll put a link in the cards just up there so you can see it. One last thing, um, the kit actually comes with a really, really good set of instructions with it. And I would highly recommend reading through that a couple of times before attempting this. As well as when you get to the wiring stage of the video, I would recommend sending a picture of your... Um, wiring that you've done to TH3D who will then check it out and make sure that you've got the wires in the right place and then you can proceed from there. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So we pick up from the last video uh, with this little bracket here. Now unfortunately I somehow managed to lose the footage of me actually fitting that but it's just these two screws that normally hold the sort of shroud on around where the fan and stuff is. Take those two out and then put the little bracket in its place, put the screws back in and then you're all good to go for the next step. So now you want to grab your little easy ABL sensor and take the bottom nut off of it. This is the one that's the opposite end to the sort of red part of the cable. And then just slide it into its sort of mounting point and then screw it back on. Now before you go the whole way of screwing it back on, you want to lower the top nut until the actual sensor is about 2mm above the nozzle itself. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you probably already noticed that I've done the fixed bed before this step but in hindsight I should have done it the other way around so hence why I'm doing it this way around in the video. But uh, a really good way of finding out that 2mm gap is perfect is to either get something that's 2mm, I've used a ruler in this case, or print yourself something that's 2mm, then level the bed, uh, like lower the z-axis down to the bed so that it's the nozzle is just above the bed and then slide in your two millimeter spacer underneath the sensor and lower it until it just touches that means your gap between the sensor and the nozzle will be exactly two millimeters now onto the bit that i should have done at this point you want to take the four leveling screws out of the way these will be the either these big plastic things or some little smaller ones just take those off and then gently lift the bed up and remove the springs At this point I just wanted to double check that the spaces fit on right and sort of sat the way I wanted them to. So I just slid those onto the bolts themselves and just put them back into place just so I could get an idea and that looks like it's all going to work fine. I just used the original sort of levelling screws just to put on. I'm going to actually replace these with nylocks but just to get an idea I put them on and saw that it was nice and firm so let's move on to the next bit. I printed all the fixed bed parts out of ABS just because I was worried about them melting but uh, for each one you want to then press in the little spacer into it, it's a really tight fit so I used my vice for this and it works really well and it uh, doesn't split the plastic or anything because it's ABS, it's less brittle, it's quite nice so you want to push those in like this now apologies I didn't get more footage of this but my elbow was in the way but uh, you just want to remove the original sort of strain relief for the cable and uh, that'll have that little cap that I sh showed you a few moments ago just on top. Just clip the little cable ties and that should all come off. Then slide all of these spaces with the 3D printed surrounds around them. You don't need the surrounds but they look nice so I thought why not. But uh, you definitely want that strain relief at the back. Now I would recommend using nylocks for this because it means they won't vibrate loose when the printer's running. So you just want to remove the glass bed so you can access the screw head on the top because you're not going to be able to screw that on by using your finger alone because the nylock bites in and obviously does its job so you'll need to hold it with a pair of pliers and just screw it into place using the sort of screw head on the top. Continue this for all four of the corners and then there's a little cap that goes over the top of the sort of cable strain relief with a little cable tie 
uh, just wrap that round with a cable tie make sure that's all in place and then your cable won't sort of degrade over time replace your glass bed and we're on to the next step which is taking the filament holder off of the top of the control box these are just held in with thumb screws but I couldn't actually do it by hand so I just quickly got my screwdriver to loosen it and then I was able to remove it now a big warning here, you want to make sure that your control box and printer has been unplugged from the power for at least an hour before, but ideally 24 hours before, because there's a very real danger that you could electrocute yourself and potentially kill yourself, because you'll have live AC as well as DC inside of there. There's also a chance that the capacitors still have power inside of them, which will also give you a shock, so you want to make sure that you wait the time before you start messing about with it. With that out of the way, you want to turn your control box upside down and remove the five screws from underneath. There will be one in each corner and then one near the centre on the one side that's opposite where the control knob is. Now don't do what I did here, I actually thought that it was fixed to the bottom plate and then the top came off, which was daft, I know, I'm stupid. But uh, you actually just want to remove that plate off the bottom and you can access everything inside. Apologies my hands in the way here, but there's a little plastic cover that's over the top of the cables that you just want to flick up. Now you want to grab the white cable that come in the kit and strip about an inch or two of the outer insulation off of it, as well as about 10mm of the insulation from the cables themselves. Now I would recommend twisting these together so you can poke them through the little grommet that's in the back of the control box you can see just here. Once you've grabbed that, just pull it through a little bit so you've got some room to work. Separate the two cables again and just make sure the little copper strands are all twisted together and the cables are nice and straight. Now I'm not sure about you but I couldn't see these very well at all so I decided to grab a sharpie and just colour them over which meant reading the symbols a lot easier. So next you want to loosen one of the red cables that's coming from the DC side of the power supply. I'll have a close up image for you so you can see exactly which ones I used but I actually removed this all the way out because I found it easier to make a loop out of the red cable from the white cable that we're actually adding to the printer. Um, make a loop out of it and then wrap it around the screw and then put that back into place because trying to hook it around it whilst it was in place was just absolutely impossible so this is the method I would recommend. Also make sure the original terminal goes back onto there as well and it's all nice and tight. This is how you want it to look when it's all screwed into place. So now you want to use the same method to do it with the black wire this time and use one of the black terminals. Again, take the screw out, make a loop, wrap it around the actual screw itself, screw it back into place with the original terminal and you're good to go. These are the terminals I would recommend using, the one on the far left which is red and then fourth from the left which is black. So now you want to strip about another inch, inch and a half from the other end of the cable and again another around about 10mm of insulation from each of the cables themselves. And we're going to actually be putting these into the TH3D little control box that comes with it. So with the control box in this orientation you want to poke the red wire into the left side of the terminal, the one that's closest to the side of the casing, and you want to put the black wire in the one that's farthest from the casing. I would recommend folding the little copper back on itself so you've got about 5mm but doubled up, and then put that into the little connector block because this will give you a much stronger connection and make sure that nothing comes loose later on. Now we want to remove the connector from the Z limit switch, it'll be on the left hand side, the same side as your extruder and just unplug it, it comes out downwards and then plug that into the little TH3D control box. Don't worry, you can't get it the wrong way around because it'll only go in one way and uh, once you've done all that it should look something like this. 
Now somehow I managed to not film this but you just want to plug in the easy ABL sensor into the back side of the little TH3D control box. Again it'll only go in one way. Now we're actually finished with everything to do with the printer control box so we can reattach the bottom plate with the five screws that came with the printer originally. Now you can tip the control box back over on itself, although you can see me messing about here, it's because I can actually hear a rattling sound coming from inside, and it turned out that I'd actually broken part of the little plastic cover that like covered over the wires and it was rattling about inside, so I took the bottom off the control box again and just made sure it was tipped out and nothing was rattling around inside, and then plugged it back in and switched it on. So as you can see, I've already got the TH3D firmware already installed on the printer. Um, if you'd like to know how to do this, I've got a tutorial of how to upgrade the firmware on that. And it also in there tells you how to enable the Easy ABL functionality. So I'll put that link in the description as well as in the cards. Next, you want to move your Z-axis up so you've got a bit of room to work. Now we want to test to make sure the sensor is working so you want to just tap it with your finger and you should see a red light come on and off on the sensor itself as well as on the TH3D control box. If you've got that then it's all working fine. So at this point you want to update your firmware and make sure you've got the easy ABL sensor enabled like in the video. Now I had to actually flick this little switch. What this does is changes between the little connector that's to the right of it and the terminal block which is just to the right of that and this is depending on what type of sensor you might have the Creality's have the little connector but if you've got a Z sensor which is only two cables then that would go into the terminal block so what I would recommend is loading up something like Pronterface and connect the printer via USB and run an M119 and you want to do this with your finger over the sensor. If the Z-axis shows as triggered, then you know you've got the switch set to the right setting. If not, flick it over to the other direction and then run it again with your finger over the sensor and it should say triggered and then you're ready to go on to the next step. Now you want to preheat your printer, so I've just gone to the preheat menu and preheated it to PLA and both the hot end and the bed. So now you want to go to your menu and go to prepare, move axis and then move Z and you want to lower your nozzle down so it's 2mm above the bed. Now you can start off with moving by 10mm and then go to 1mm to get some more fine tuning out of it but uh, you want to make sure it is 2mm above the bed and again I use my trusty ruler to see whether this was 2mm above the bed. I would recommend using the 0.1 setting so you can make sure you've got it absolutely perfect. Next you want to get a small blade screwdriver and you want to adjust the little screw in the side of the sensor until the red light goes off. So you just want to keep adjusting it very gently and go back and forth until you're just onto the point where that the little red light goes off. The red light should also go off in the little control box as well. Now we're ready for our first auto home, so if you go to menu, prepare and then auto home and let it do its thing, it will home all the axes and then it will home the Z. Now I actually had my finger hovering over the power button just in case I'd mess something up, but thankfully it triggered and it stopped exactly how it was supposed to be. Now as you'll probably notice it doesn't actually home straight to the bed, it actually homes to 5mm above the bed and this is just for safety in case the offset's not quite set quite right, it won't just plough straight into the bed. So what you want to do is go back to move Z and set it back down to 0 and now we're ready to set our Z offset so we get our perfect first layer. So you want to go back out of that menu, back to the prepare menu and then back to the main menu and then you want to go to control motion probe z offset and in this menu it gives us a really fine amount of adjustment so what you want to do is get a standard piece of paper and put it under and you want to adjust the nozzle down until you get the same resistance that you would if you were leveling the bed manually in my case it was actually minus 1.950 but in your case it'll be completely different because it's depending on what nozzle you got your bed thickness and a lot of other different factors so Set that so you've got your nice 
bit of resistance underneath the nozzle and then you want to go back and auto home once again incidentally don't forget to hit store settings before you hit auto home else when you turn the printer off it won't remember any of the settings you've put in so make sure you do that now in terms of the technical stuff that's it really it's just a little bit of cleanup work now and uh, sorry my arm is in the way again I've got a really bad habit of doing this I need to find a better setup but uh, I just taped all the cables to the Bowden tube that we fitted in the last video so it's all nice and neat um, I put the cap back on the control box and uh, I just run the cables through the little grooves either side. I put the filament holder back on using the thumb screws and I just nip them up with a screwdriver just to make sure. Now this next step is possibly the most important. We need to change our star and NG code so the sensor works correctly. So inside your slicer you want to go to where your machine settings are. In Cura that's under settings, printers, manage printers and then select the printer and click machine settings and you want to add these specific g-code instructions for the start and end and this will make sure that the sensor works correctly now with the th3d files you actually get this lovely first layer test so i put this into cure and sliced it and we'll see how we do so now we've got our sensor enabled it'll home all the axes as normal but it'll also probe a bunch of different points the amount of points is set during the installation of the firmware so go and check that video out if you want to find out about that but what it does is it builds a mesh of the actual bed like a virtual representation of it so it can adjust for any sort of discrepancies in the bed it'll then do a purge line to make sure the nozzles clear and primed and then it'll begin the print I actually did a brim on this one and I probably didn't need to but I just wanted to make sure and I wanted um, more surface area to see how the, well the sensor performs and I'm happy to say performs really well if you'd like to do some fine tuning while it's printing you can press the little control knob in twice and it'll bring you back to that Z offset menu and then you can fine tune the distance in on the bed and make sure it prints absolutely perfectly well, that's it that's the mod all done and dusted it's one of those mods that you don't realize you need and then when you have it you can't do without it it's just such a wonderful quality of life change to the printer that i'm never going back <laughs> that and it makes your prints that much more reliable it's worth every single penny i can't recommend it enough but anyway that's about it for this video thanks everybody for watching if you enjoyed please like comment and subscribe it helps me out a lot and i shall see you next time Ta-da!